Heard a lot about this uh, show, the ex-candidates. This has been a pretty thorough interview. <laughs> These institutions which we've been told to respect and trust are actually completely untrustworthy. Have you confirmed that you are negative before attending tonight if you are unvaccinated? I still see people with masks on and driving and they're in the car by themselves. So you can pay my electricity bill, you think, that was spared. We're teaching them about what it means to be a pansexual instead of teaching them how to do your taxes. It's no for me. I say no to the boys. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Ex Candidates. My name is Stephen Tripp and as always I'm joined by the One Nation candidate for Campbelltown, Adam Zara. How are you tonight, Adam? I'm pretty good, Stephen. How are you going, mate? I'm very excited because on tonight's episode we have Tanya Mihalik, One Nation's new recruit for the Upper House. How are you tonight, Tanya? I'm well, Stephen. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, if I don't get a little bit of a background from you, you, usually Adam yells at me. So can you just let everyone know like a little bit of a background about sure. you, who you are and, uh, you know. Um, God, where, where do I begin? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, a little bit about, I suppose I should say a little bit personal background. So, uh, well, I'm a mum. I'm a, I'm a wife. I've got three children. Uh, one that my youngest is about to be a teenager. So they're all three teenagers. So uh, like many other um, parents out there, I'm, I'm going through all the normal trials and challenges of, um, of raising uh, teenagers in today's world. Uh, I grew up uh, in southwest Sydney, so predominantly in Bankstown, Chester Hill, Punchbowl. Um, my, I went to primary school in Punchbowl and later in Bankstown, so I've always generally lived uh, in southwest Sydney and uh, I had the great opportunity of event at some point, I think in my 20s, of getting onto our local council at Bankstown City Council. And uh, from there, I um, uh, so I was a councillor, then I became a deputy mayor and a mayor. And in 2011, I stepped into the state parliament. So that's my kind of uh, political background. I went to uni, I studied economics and law. I just finished my master's of law, which was um, really daunting and very hard to do when you're trying to work and, and raise a family. Anybody who does uh, uh, part-time study when you're working full-time will, will know how difficult that is. But I'm really glad that I that I did it. It's, um, it's a great, uh, happy with myself. And I paid for it completely myself, so in, before anybody asks. Uh, but... Um, my family background is that um, my grandparents, a lot of people ask me where Mahaley comes from, uh, and that is my grandfather's surname. So he was born in Ukraine and uh, in a city called Belosekov, which is about four hours south of Kiev. And he left Ukraine in 1905 and ended up in China. And my other grandparents, so on my uh, my dad's um, oh, my maternal paternal grandmother uh, left Russia when she was about four. She was orphaned and she travelled into China as well. And my mum's uh, grandparents or my grandparents on my mum's side also uh, came from Russia as well. So it's a Russian-Ukrainian background, but they all ended up into China because they're all escaping communism. So you would know a lot of people, particularly yourself, Adam. I think in Southwest Sydney we've got a lot of families that um, that I know of that live out in Campbelltown that were uh, coming at, uh, coming to Australia basically for a better, better life, get away from a communist regime. And essentially in China eventually... Uh, my parents were born there. They uh, were never classed as citizens in China, so they were never. Um, they were simply refugees in, or stateless people in China, and eventually they had to leave China. So my father left in 1959. He actually boarded a cargo ship, uh, would you believe, and uh, travelled the world for about ten years on cargo oh. ships, and he was stateless and lived eventually in Brazil for two years and uh, applied for uh, an application to the US that was rejected. He applied to go to Russia that was rejected and then he applied for Australia and he was accepted. So he was really delighted when he arrived into Australia in 1959 and into the Sydney Harbour and he vowed never to leave. Uh, he passed away back in 2018 and I can tell you from 1959 to 2018 he never left Australia. He was so happy uh, to be granted citizenship in Australia, and he was delighted uh, to be in Australia. So it was the first time he was afforded citizenship of any country. So he was always really proud of being a, an Australian. 
And he raised us uh, that way. Uh, we always, of course, acknowledged our own heritage and our faith and our background, but he always spoke to me predominantly in English. He uh, wanted me to learn, do my best. Uh, he believed in, in studying and, and lifelong learning, and he was always really proud to be, be an Australian. So uh, my mother had a similar background. She was escaping communism as well in China. She ended up in Hong Kong in 1960 and flew out into Australia, into Melbourne, actually. And uh, and she was also, uh, it was pretty hard because they had to go in, into some tough jobs straight away and, and her own mother worked in factories in China to raise uh, my mum and her siblings. Three of her siblings actually died uh, during the Holodomor, so the, the famine that Stalin um, uh, inflicted on millions and millions of people in the 30s affected my mum's family. So her first three siblings actually died in that uh, famine. So they were very, and still my mum's alive today and she lives in Chester Hill and, and she vehemently opposed to um, to communism. So uh, that sort of gives you an idea of my background. So often people say, well, how did you end up in the Labor Party if uh, your family was so um, anti-communist? And and part of the reason I ended up in the Labor Party is because I grew up in Bankstown and, and Paul Keating was my local member. Mm. Uh, and uh, back in the day, um, Labor Party wasn't so left-wing, certainly not in the time that I joined in 1996 if you're a working class person or a working you know, from a working class community like Bankstown, you would be happy to vote Labor and happy to support Labor. Uh, and I'm sure many of you would, would know people from South West Sydney, particularly yourself, Adam, that had a similar view. Back in the 90s, a lot of people liked Bob Hawke. They liked um, Paul Keating and they felt that uh, the agenda coming from the Labor Party at that time was focused on you know floating the dollar, focused on... Uh, you know, industrial relations, improving industrial relations, for example, actually focused on the economy and how to improve uh, um, Australia at the time. Uh, that's not what the Labor Party is focused on now, of course, we know, but it certainly was at a time when I joined. So I joined in 1996 and I remember uh, Mark Latham very well when he um, was still involved with the Labor Party back then. And I also remember how badly he was treated by the Labor Party too. So uh, it was a you could see that Mark, people couldn't un understand or appreciate what Mark was trying to um, to essentially um, espouse with the Labor Party. He was trying to get a strong message to the Labor Party to understand uh, that working class communities just wanted people to focus on common sense policies and not on, on idiotic agendas. And uh, and that's why I think he had a real rough time in the Labor Party, probably similar to, to me in some extent because... It's been a couple of years now for me where I've been, you know, really tired of of the the direction the Labor Party's been taking. Well, so that's a nutshell. That gives me sorry. I've probably gone on too long there, but it gives you kind of a rough background of of uh, how I ended up here and and how I ended up um, in the Labor Party originally and and sort of why I've left the Labor Party really. But look, we're really excited to have you on board as part of the party. I'm sure you bring a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge and, and how to, you know, uh, help One Nation evolve into the future. So uh, we're very excited and thank you for very, thank you for coming on tonight's show. How can people follow you, uh, you know, if they want to learn more about you and follow well, you during the campaign? Yeah, look, I've got my Facebook, so that's just my my full name and P as well. I think it's Tanya Mahaley Kim P. I've got a Twitter account as well. I've got an Instagram account, but I don't use that very often, so I've got to try and get into that. But I do use Twitter and, and Facebook. So, okay. um, yeah, but they'll see me. I'll be out and about. Awesome. And I'm awesome. hoping to go out to a lot of the seats where we've got One Nation candidates to hand out at train stations at the shopping centres. <laughs> like you, Adam, yes. <laughs> like Tuesday, Tuesday morning, 5 o'clock. Oh, AM. that's cool. That's pretty early. <laughs> hey, we're all tradies. We start early out here. You much, but that's early, early for the Labor Party. I don't think they make the train station until about eight a.m. Wow. Oh, then mm. well, put it this way: I don't think they go to train stations at all because we had problems in Lemire lifts. lifts. I saw you do that. Weeks. I saw you. You you were down there in the morning, and there was no one there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the lifts hadn't worked for haven't been working for four weeks, and then um, yeah, I mean, you know, like so they don't know anything about what's going on in the area. But they're fixed now because of you, right? 
Well, apparently, um, that's why I spoke to Mark about it yesterday, actually, and he said that, they, that he was at the train station at Lemire and he said uh, he saw workers down there. So one day after we've made the video, there you, go. Um, you know, and we've had questions put forward through to um, the transport minister, people are there. So I'm going to go, I'll go do a follow-up video about that and go, yeah, <laughs> just make a phone call and make it happen. <laughs> so follow, Matt, follow Adam Zara's page as well. It's, it's full of uh, great stuff. And, and we've got uh, great leaders. We've got great people just like um, Tanya Mihalik here and um, obviously Mark Latham who's in the background there. We've got, um, you know, people with a spine, people with a bit of backbone, people with a bit of nous and a bit of vision. And that's what we want. That's what One Nation is, you know. It's, a, it's, a, it's about a positive vision, like all this misery and all this woke and all this depression, mm. you know. It's about cracking them well, out of that. Gloom you know? and doom, isn't it? It's all gloom no. and doom. Mm. Yes, the world's not going to end. The world's not going to end. And we Everything's going to be okay. Just vote the right way. We didn't bring it up during the podcast, but you were you were basically uh, you know kicked out of the Labor Party because you were brave enough to stand up against corruption. So I think you've uh, you've your track record speaks for your, itself. But if you've enjoyed this episode, please share it far and wide. Would you know help us get this information out there? Thank you, Tanya, again for uh, coming on the show. Thank you again, Adam, as always, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.